tonight on News 5 Live. The man accused of killing his wife with a conch shell is arraigned. 18-year-old charged with Coast Guard's murder. Two men sentenced to life in prison for 2016 chopping murder. These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. For 19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, SMART has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making SMART a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the SMART family where we empower you and our country today, tomorrow, and beyond. Smart! Bringing people together! Thirteen million eight hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred eggs are eaten by tourists each year, fueling our thriving economy. Tourism means business. Watch The Truth of God with Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. exclusively on Channel 5 Belize. The Truth of God with Pastor Gino Jennings every Sunday at 8 a.m. on Channel 5 Belize. Discover a shopping experience like no other at the V Department Store. They carry a vast array of products at unbeatable prices. Elevate your shopping journey with a Affordability, diversity, and accessibility at the V. Conveniently located at 1745 Coney Drive in Belize City.
Good evening. Welcome to News 5 Live for Friday, April 12th. I am Anlina Polonio. 41-year-old Minor Ancona is out on bail after being arraigned on five criminal charges. Ancona is accused of causing the death of his partner, 46-year-old American national Jennifer Griffith, on Ambergris Key. As we reported on April 6th, Ancona got into an altercation with another male individual at a bar on the island. During the altercation, Ancona allegedly picked up a conch shell and threw it at the person, but it caught Griffith in the head. That injury later led to her death. As a result, he was charged with manslaughter by negligence, disorderly conduct, two counts of harm, and one count of wounding. He appeared before a magistrate in Belize City in the presence of his attorney, Erson O.J. Ellington. In court, no plea was taken from Ancona for four of the five counts, apart from disorderly conduct for which he pleaded not guilty. There were no objections to bail being granted to Ancona by the prosecutor, who only asked for stringent conditions to be laid as the police investigation is ongoing at this time. With that, the sitting senior magistrate offered bail to Ancona in the sum of $10,000 plus one surety of the same or two sureties of $5,000 each, which he met. Ellington spoke with us following the arrangement. The allegation by the police is that um, there was a fight and that the, uh, my client, that there were coconut shells thrown and that one of those shells hit the deceased and she died subsequent to that. My client denies that that is the facts and what happened. So let's begin there. Um, but of course, manslaughter by negligence is one of those offenses which is not tried summarily. It has to be tried in the Supreme Court. And so um, no plea was taken for those charges, nor a number of other charges that the DPP needs to determine whether or not those charges will be heard summarily or whether or not they will be heard by the High Court. He has been in police custody for about two plus days now and when I initially met with him of course he is still grieving because he lost his common-law wife and he of course just want, wanted to get out so that he'd be able to make the necessary preparations and for her for her for her funeral or or if they need to transport her body or whatever and um, they're desirous of doing no and um, so of course he that is his primary concern right now he was very concerned and and still in the mourning process again losing a loved one is never something easy and especially under these circumstances where um, the authorities have charged him for the debt and he feels unfairly so and um, it's also it's obviously a very um, Tough situation for him. Elmer Castro, the individual Ancona got into an altercation with at the bar, was also charged for disorderly conduct and two counts of wounding. The 18 year old who police believe murdered 26 year old Charles James has been criminally charged. Investigators say that Jalen Jones fatally shot James on Wednesday night. At that time, chaos erupted after police arrived at the scene and a shootout ensued between the suspects and officers. As previously reported, Jones was injured in the crossfire, having been shot in the foot. Police claim that due to the clothes and vicinity Jones was found in, he matched the description of the alleged shooter. Jones's family protested him being detained, alleging that the police were operating under a case of mistaken identity and that Jones had no involvement in the crime other than being caught in the crossfire. One of those who protested was Joseph Anthony Camp, Jones's brother-in-law. Camp was charged with spreading false news. On Thursday, UDP Chairman Michael Perfeet was asked about the murder of Coast Guard Officer Charles James as a former Minister of National Security. Perfeet lamented the death of yet another law enforcement officer by gun violence in the span of three weeks. He says that it is a reflection of lawlessness in the country. When anybody dies in the country, especially you know, 
criminal related um, killings. You, you, you feel a sadness overall because there doesn't seem to be a sense of law and order in the country. But when you have members of the security forces being killed needlessly, then it is really a concern because you would hope, it's like, for example, when people are assumed to possess a certain level of decency that you, you wouldn't do certain things to a child, you wouldn't do certain things to an adult. Um, anybody who is serious enough and committed enough to do something or to violate a member of the security forces is a serious contender. And for a person to think that that is nothing for them to do, it, it tells you that, that there is a mood. There is a mood in the country right now um, that, that people feel like to hell with law and order, to hell with what they, what 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 people think is going on. They, they will do what they want, and it's almost that they're confident that they will get away with it, or that no big deal will be made of it. We we are living in a time now where life seems to be very very cheap, and there doesn't seem to be anything in place to 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 arrest. Um, the trend that we're on, not even a state of emergency is, is, is stopping certain things. So um, it, it makes you wonder how much worse it will get. Two men have been sentenced to life behind bars for a 2016 murder. They are Marlon Padilla and Guillermo Duarte. They murdered Edgar Aldana on April 2, 2016. The man will now serve life imprisonment with eligibility for parole after 25 years. Aldana was chopped to death in Selena Village, Cayo. The murder was because of a misunderstanding. Belize City resident Richard Bennett is tonight a free man. He was acquitted of the murders of Cynthia Connerke and Alan Garcia. They were fatally shot while at Connerke's residence on Logwood Street in Belize City in March 2021. Bennett was set free after the judge upheld his attorney's no case submission. At the start of the trial of war there, was held and it was ruled that an oral confession was inadmissible due to a procedural irregularities. There was no justice of the peace present, nor was the proceeding recorded, leading the judge to conclude that it did not qualify as an interview. Despite the Crown's presentation of 11 witnesses and video footage allegedly showing the shooter, both pieces of evidence were deemed inadmissible. Bennett was represented by attorney Leroy Banner. In December 2023, the Ministry of Youths, Sports and Transportation made several amendments to motor vehicle and road traffic regulations, which were implemented in March of this year. These amendments include the mandatory use of seat belts for drivers and all passengers in motor vehicles and the predominance of the use of electric devices such as cell phones while always driving a vehicle. Failure to comply with wearing a seat belt will result in the issuance of a traffic violation ticket while the use of an electronic device will incur a fine not exceeding $500, imprisonment not exceeding six months, or both a fine and imprisonment. Commissioner of Police Chester Williams said that while the adjustment may not come easily to most, it is important. It certainly gives the police and uh, the traffic wardens the authority in law to be able to issue violation tickets for any person who is found to be driving a motor vehicle um, not wearing a seat belt or um, persons who are on a cell phone while they're driving so it is it is a good thing um, I must say that many a times we see people committing these infractions I myself do it at times so um, I have to make the adjustment as well um, as you would know I am a person who traverses the country a lot and um, if I know I'm going somewhere that I will return home later than expected I would not take my driver because he have to go home to his family so I would normally drive myself and uh, when I do drive myself I still have to be 
paying attention to the phone. Um, messages are coming in, calls are coming in. So I have a um, my vehicle. I, 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 when I connect it to the um, to the when I connect the phone to the vehicle, um, there is an uh, application on my phone that allows the phone to read the text. So that is good, and I also use the um, the application where I can speak to the phone and the phone write the text messages and then just say send and it sends it so there is there is that hands-free um, capability with the phone um, once connected to the vehicle but it still is a distraction at times and so um, again it's just a matter for, for us to make that adjustment and make sure that we comply with the regulations um, in terms of the seat belt we we know that there have been many instances where seat belts do save lives um, we have had a number of traffic fatalities on our highways and so it is important that um, drivers as well as passengers in um, in vehicles wear the seat belt it is to save your own life should the need arise there is more news coming up ahead stay with us Hello friends, I'm Dr. Bob Roberts with another 60 second sermon from God's Word. The Bible says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mrs. Ritchie is one of the oldest members of the Light of the Valley Baptist Church in Stan Creek Valley. She is 90 years of age, hardly ever misses a church service, and is a wonderful lady. The last time I preached in this church, she sang two specials and concluded with a heartwarming testimony. She related that in 1935, at the age of 23, she got on a ship to sail to Belize from Jamaica. She said they sailed from Jamaica on a Friday and landed in Belize on Sunday. As they neared the coastline, they gathered on the ship deck to view their new homeland. They tried to come into port that Sunday, but the pilots were not working, and thus they had to wait until Monday to get a pilot to come out to their ship and guide them into the port. She then reminded those present that if they wanted to go to heaven, that they too needed a pilot to guide them safely into heaven's harbor. The pilot who can guide you safely home is Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Trust him today to be the pilot of your soul. Today's 60 second sermon has been presented by Christian Foundations of Faith in cooperation with the Baptist churches in your area. San Ignacio, all the preparations have been made. It's time to enjoy the festivities. On April 12th and 13th, it's the grand opening of Quality Poultry Products Quality Food Supermarket and Chicken Express. Bring out the entire family for not one, but two fun-filled days. There will be Bouncy House, a mechanical bull, free food and drinks for purchases made, music, free games, and of course, discount on chicken. It's going to be crazy fun. How do you get there? Just drive on down to the corner of Branch Mouth and Joseph Andrew Drive and get in on the celebration. Mark your calendars, April 12th and 13th. Opening ceremonies start at 10 a.m. Quality poultry products. This stuff for wheat chicken. <coughs> well, sir, I really got through some stress with my barber. This man here, they push my hairline way back to the 90s. Sure. It's a people. They call me BB Buck Buck Farid now. So I got a problem, right? I just do this for a shoot, and I want the best for the shoot. But somebody don't want me to keep posting it up. Mm -hmm. I just tired of this, man. I don't want to tell her to catch me on my way. I stopped at the shop and I tell the lady I want five dollars tacos. You could imagine what you give me? No, no, no. <clears throat> what are your problem? Honestly, life good for me over here. I just upgraded to the Digi One Elite. I have unlimited postpaid plans, Digi TV, free home phone, and the fastest home internet. I went upgrade man's no. Hey 
you Belize, come join us at the Belize Earth Day, a creatively green pop-up happening at the Memorial Park on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Shop from a wide selection of eco-friendly boots, light, soul handmade clay jewelry, Hello Body Belize, Naturally Belize Cosmetics, Belize Eco Bag, Zero Belize, and so much more. Enjoy delectable food and beverages from Don Ceviche, Iguana Stop, Brain Freeze Margaritas, just to name a few. Live performances by QB and Band, Britney Star, and Yes Talia. For more details, call us at 227-2420. The Belize Earth Day pop-up is brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the Belize City Council. Sponsors include Digi Wallet, Coca-Cola, and the Belize Waste Control Limited. See you on April 20th at the Memorial Park. Over the weekend, another man lost his life while at work while undertaking an occupational risk. The incident has prompted the National Trade Union Congress of Belize to ask when the Occupational Safety and Health Bill will become law. President of the NTUCB, Luke Martinez, told News 5 that while they wait with bated breath for a protective bill to pass into law, more people are dying because their employers are not held accountable to ensure occupational safety. Belize continues to be one of the countries who uh, seems to not want to have occupational safety and health regulated. And uh, that, that's definitely uh, a travesty on, on our part. And um, clearly, uh, it leads us to wonder how serious uh, our legislatures are um, as it relates to ensuring that we have a safe and healthy working environment. The National Trade Union Congress, you know that we and the chamber, we've been pushing uh, this agenda for over a decade, and um, every step we continue to seem to be close but far, and uh, uh, that's that's very concerning to us. Last time we we, we updated the, the the media and the, the country, um, we 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 were at the Ministry of Labour with the bill where. The Chairman of National Trade Union Congress had submitted um, our documents to them stating that we've come to terms with a lot of the great areas that were existing and um, we want this bill to pass now. And so the ministry uh, had prepared a cabinet paper. Uh, they shared the cabinet paper, with, uh, presented that to cabinet and uh, cabinet forwarded the bill to the attorney general ministry. Now, this is two months ago, two months ago, right? And um, while we understand that the technical staff has to ensure that um, the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, workers are falling to their debts, right? Uh, so, uh, and one would argue that the bill is not going to stop people from dying immediately, right? Uh, that, for me, that's not a valid argument. Um, once we have CFD in our workplace, we are going to get there. Martinez told us that the Umbrella Union has put together a work plan to launch a campaign to legislate the OSH bill in a more organized manner. He said that a part of that plan is to include regional and international partners in the union's attempt to expedite the process. We've decided to reach out to our regional partners also to assist us in, in pushing this agenda. So on the, the, for the week of the, the 21st, I think on the 25th, uh, we'll have a uh, our regional partners from Trinidad, from the Supriani uh, Labor College, and um, with them will be one of their OSH experts. And so um, we, he is happy and we are excited about uh, getting him to, to, to give a presentation to the general public 
And so um, Al will be invited, the presentation of course, um, will be around the importance of us and um, how we could move this forward, including as advancing us in belief as, as, as a fundamental right. right? So um, it, it's bigger than, 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 than what we are looking at right now. And so we, we, the National Trade Union Congress, continue to do our part, right? The International Labor Organization is uh, fully supporting us. They are uh, supporting us with financing the, 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 the campaign uh, that, that, that we are launching. Um, Ms. Vera from the International Labor Organization will be in the lead. We've engaged uh, not only regional, but also our international affiliates to help to push and promote um, this, this, this agenda now. Um, of course, the, the, the aim is to ensure that we sensitize um, every single worker, we sensitize the, 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 the working class, that we sensitize the general public and also, we, uh, we, uh, one of our target groups is um, high, uh, high school in third form, second form, as well as tertiary at, at the tertiary level. Belize is hosting the 50th Caribbean Telecommunications Union Executive Council meeting and the Caribbean ICT Minister's Seminar and Retreat. The Caribbean Telecommunications Union, or CTU, was established in 1989 to bring CARICOM member states together to develop inter-regional and international communication networks. Since its creation, CTU has become a key regional voice for the formulation of information and communication technology, best practices, and policies within the region. Members of that union are in Belize not only to learn from how we have progressed as a nation, but also to share their knowledge. News 5's Paul Lopez reports. Representatives from 20 CARICOM member states all gathered inside the San Ignacio Hotel's Bedran Hall for the 50th Executive Council meeting of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. So we have um, representation from all 20 CARICOM member states. Um, we have nine ministers um, and PSs representing all of the countries who are members of the CTU. The executive meeting is being held simultaneously with the Caribbean Information and Communications Technology Network Seminar. These events are being hosted by the Minister of Public Utilities, Michelle Shabbat. I think this, um, this seminar really highlights the importance of this whole digital transformation agenda and the key role that IT is actually playing in transforming the lives of our citizens and our economies. And so, you know, having the presence of so many ministers from across the region here really brings to the fore how important this sector really is. Regional digital collaboration is at the heart of this event. Through the development of regional strategies and policies, CTU member states have been learning from each other's successes and failures. Hasil Bakas is the president of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union and the Minister of Digital Transformation in Trinidad and Tobago. We're all on the same journey. We're all on the same journey. We're just at different stages of that journey. There's some, place, some things in which Trinidad and Tobago is a bit ahead. There's some places where Barbados is a bit ahead. In terms of energy and, and energy works, you find Belize is ahead. Uh, St. Kitts is trying to follow. So we recognize that statement I made when we said, together we are stronger. It's not just about the strong bringing the weak, it's learning from everyone and all of us trying to create this economy of scale for the Caribbean that individually we cannot do. Through the seminar, the union will update its members on developments in the information and communication sector. As technology evolves, CTU has established itself as a preferred source of ICT advice for regional governments. Rodney Taylor, the Secretary General at the Union, shared some areas that will be discussed. Such as uh, 5G developments, um, cybersecurity, and we also had a special uh, presentation on renewable energy. So that is an opportunity for them to be brought up to speed on what is happening in the industry. Beyond 5G, uh, our governments are doing a number of initiatives such as uh, public sector modernization and transformation using technologies. Uh, 5G and next generation technologies that provide connectivity are fundamental to that because we want to make sure that everyone uh, has good connectivity so that they can have access to these public services in a digital environment. So connectivity is high on the list. 
Uh, cybersecurity is also important that as they connect, that they connect in a secure environment and these public services are secure as well and people's personal data is well protected. Also present at the seminar was Dr. Cosmas Zava Zava. He is the director of the Telecommunications Development Bureau under the International Telecommunications Union. It is really a pleasure to be here and I want to thank the government and the peoples of Belize for the hospitality extended to me personally and to the rest of the delegates. It's important because Belize is one of the small island developing states and we are in the Caribbean and we are just almost getting to the United Nations conference or for small island developing states. And uh, we try to find solutions uh, with respect to connectivity and how connectivity can help to achieve healthy targets, uh, agriculture, uh, safeguarding the environment, etc., etc. So all the sectors depend basically on uh, connectivity. So we have shared with them um, the progress we've made. We've spoken to them about the um, the digital leave system that we have for public offices. We've spoken to them about our digital connect centers. We've spoken to them, believe it or not, about green energy and how that impacts ICT. You know, we had a very interesting conversation with a representative from Cuba who spoke to us about their national ID that they have. And as you know, that is something that we're embarking on. And so, you know, it's been, a, it's been a great experience for all of us. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez. The United Democratic Party of Belize has issued a statement condemning the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela following the nation's adoption of a law that seeks to defend a portion of Guyana as its own. The legislation is being referred to as the Organic Law for the Defense of Guyana Esequiba. And the UDP says that this irresponsible, dangerous and unprovoked act by Venezuela has resulted in an escalation of tensions between the countries. The statement notes that this action poses a serious threat to peace, stability and security within Latin America and the Caribbean region. Both nations have been going through an increasingly tense border dispute that may be reaching a tipping out. UDP Chairman Michael Perfi says the UDP is urging Venezuela to take the matter to the International Court of Justice. Guyana is, is, is a sister nation to, to, to her. It's, it's a CARICOM. She's a CARICOM sibling. And, and, and we value Guyana. We understand fully well um, what she's going through because, well, we, we were going through the same thing and now we're before the ICJ and hopefully within the next year or two, we can resolve that once and for all. Um, our simple position is this, that whenever you have these types of disputes, the strong arm tactics, we, we wouldn't support under any circumstances um, to see the needs. If there is a border dispute, if there is an issue, then all we say to another nation that's been good to be these Venezuela, no take your matter to the ICJ. We, we, we live in a civilized world, hopefully, and we want to settle these things in a civil matter. So Guyana, Venezuela, if there's a dispute, uh, whether it relates to the Esequibo area or any other area of the country, if you have a dispute, then join forces for this to happen, like what Belize did, what Guatemala did, and go to a referendum, have a vote, and take the matter to the ICJ. With all the breaking and mending that has been taking place within the United Democratic Party, Chairman Michael Perfit has been a constant party figure. There has been no conversation about him leaving the party, whether by force or willingly. So does that mean that members are satisfied with Perfit's performance despite the UDP's recent defeat at the municipal polls? Well, we asked him, and he said his party is pleased with his performance, at least to his knowledge. Listen to me, I was giving someone the statistics the other day, you know. We look at this PUP like some juggernaut, right? Um, when the UDP won the Belize at the Council in 2006, it wasn't for another 12 years, you know, that they won the City Council, if, if my maths is correct. We have been in this situation for about, what, three years, going on four years, so to speak. Um, it's not a very, very long time. It feels like a lifetime, given what has happened, but it's not a very, very long time. And 
We have, for example, a current prime minister who was not the leader of his party 18 months before he became prime minister. I mean, he's changed, you know. There was a time when there was a, a, a PUP leader for about an hour. And, and, and so, look, politics is, politics is very fluid. What I can tell you about me is that nobody will tell me when it's time for me to leave. I will make that determination. Um, I was voted in by the National Convention to be the chairman. There are provisions within the constitution of the party that you can call a national convention and then you can remove me if you want. People are free to do that. Um, them having not done it, and we show no, we show no lack of interest in triggering these things. So I'm assuming if that was what people wanted within the party, they would have done that. But if enough people come to me and tell me that they want me to go, I'll go. After the break, ANU commander demoted after failing to meet requirements. But first, here's the weather update with data from the National Meteorological Service. BEBL Basketball. It's all happening on Sunday, April 14th, inside the Billy Civic Center. Come and witness the Tiger Sharks versus Belmopan, Georgia, and always break. That's why I like to pick the about there. Bring out the entire family this Sunday, Billy Civic Center. Doors open at 4 p.m. and game starts at 6 p.m. Music, food, drinks, and giveaways. Big giveaways at the halftime. San Pedro Tiger Sharks versus Belmopan, Georgia. It's all happening on Sunday, April 14th, inside the Billy Civic Center. Doors open at 4 p.m. and game starts at 6 p.m. After party will be at Reggae Sundays at Thursday, Thursday. Sponsors are Real Bad Man. San Ignacio. All the preparations have been made. It's time to enjoy the festivities. On April 12th and 13th, it's the grand opening of Quality Poultry Products Quality Food Supermarket and Chicken Express. Bring out the entire family for not one, but two fun-filled days. There will be Bouncy House, a mechanical bull, free food and drinks for purchases made, music, free games, and of course, discount on chicken. It's going to be crazy fun. How do you get there? Just drive on down to the corner of Branch Mouth and Joseph Andrew Drive and get in on the celebration. Mark your calendars. April 12th and 13th. Opening ceremonies start at 10 a.m. Quality poultry products. This stuff for wheat chicken. For 19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, SMART has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making SMART a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the SMART family where we empower you and our country today, tomorrow, and beyond. Smart! Bringing people together! At the Oasis, we believe in the art of celebration. Our exquisite range of wines adds a touch of elegance to every celebration. 
make your sports night with the finest spirits from the Oasis. Savor the victory with every sip. Love, laughter, and the perfect blend. Whether it's a romantic evening or a casual get together, our spirits set the mood. The Oasis is your destination for all occasions. Visit us today and discover a world of taste, quality, and elegance. The Oasis, where every bottle tells a story. The human papilloma virus, HPV, is responsible for 90% of cervical cancer cases. 80% of the population may be infected with HPV during their lifetime. HPV screening can prevent cervical cancer. Females 25 to 65 years old get tested for HPV. The HPV test is now available at your nearest health facility. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, with funding and partnership support from the United States of America. The Anti-Narcotics Unit is operating under new leadership after Assistant Superintendent and former Deputy Commander Roberto Novello was replaced with Francis Williams, who was Novello's deputy. When asked about the change in the unit, Commissioner of Police Chester Williams explained that Novello was removed from his position as he did not meet requirements upheld by the U.S. government that are needed to fulfill the role. Williams was also pressed about a recent search being conducted by the unit, which he said is still under investigation. No, the ANU has a commander. Um, the substantive commander, as you rightly said, was removed. Um, we do have a um, uh, MOU with the U.S. government in particular, the, the DEA, as it relates to the administration of ANU, where the commander and all members must undergo certain procedures every three years. And if you don't um, pass those procedures, then you are removed. And so the, the, the farmer or the substantive commander um, did not meet the requirements, and so he was removed, and the deputy commander is now the new commander. He failed a lie detector test? Um, he did not meet the requirements. Okay, sir, and then we saw the ANU doing a search at Camp 20 at a, a residence of a Mennonite. We know that there's a lot of hubbub about this. It's supposedly a land fraud case. All types of allegations are being made, and we know the personalities are um, personalities who might be of interest to police. What do you know about the, the raid at Camp 20 by the ANU? Um, I know that the police, not just the ANU, but police um, officers are always um, in that area. And if it is that the police have information of any um, wrongdoing being done by anybody, then the police will go in and do what needs to be done. And so Camp 20 is no different. Um, once there's information, then we go in and try to verify what we're getting. But you're aware these people are alleging land fraud orchestrated by someone associated with a Belize City gang? Well, I, I am not aware of that aspect of it. Um, if that is the case, then I would encourage them to come and make a report and then we investigate and see. Earlier this week, Chief Engineer Evandale Moody indicated that a portion of a budget has been allocated for the replacement of the Belkan Bridge, but the remaining portion has to still be identified to replace the bridge that needs replacement. Moody also told us about major work on the Philip Golson and the George Price highways that are set to enter new phases in the coming weeks. He said that the work on a stretch on the Philip Golson Highway should get started by September, while the work on the George Price Highway will begin sooner, perhaps in a couple of months. 
we have um, three projects. Yes, we have the Philip Wilson Highway project from mile 8 to mile 24.5. That project we have awarded a contract to the consultants for them to do the design review for that project. And we expect to commence the procurement of contractors for that project within another three months. So we're expecting to have a contractor on the ground for the upgrading of the Philip Wilson Highway from mile 8 to 24, I would say by September of this year. We are also looking at the George Price Highway, which the Belkan Bridge is a part of because it's it's five sections. However, we have um, obtained financing from Caribbean Development Bank for Section 3 of the George Price Highway, which is from Belize City to Hattieville. And so we expect that we could commence procurement process for that um, maybe within the next quarter as well. So we should commence those works on the George Price Highway very soon. The Tuna Transparency Pledge is an initiative led by the Nature Conservancy that is seeking to achieve 100% underwater monitoring by 2027. Belize joined the Federated States of Micronesia, Walmart, Albertson Companies and Thai Union as one of the first signatories of the pledge. The endeavor was launched to combat unsustainable and illegal practices in tuna fisheries by uniting key players across the seafood supply chain. We spoke with the Deputy Director of Belize High Seas Fisheries Unit, Robert Robinson, who explained the process in more detail. The pledge seeks to achieve 100% underwater monitoring by all the signatories and by 2027. And what this will do, all the signatories who will be at different levels in the supply chain will ensure that their tuna uh, is either coming from a source that is uh, under covered by uh, underwater monitoring or um, the governments will ensure that all vessels operating under their, their jurisdiction are covered by underwater monitoring. And by underwater monitoring, I mean either human observer or electronic monitoring um, means. And how does that benefit the production and acquisition of tuna? Well, uh, people across the world have been uh, increasingly concerned about where their food is coming from, uh, specifically seafood. and. What this helps to do is to uh, bring full transparency to the tuna supply chain so that consumers are uh, com comfortable and confident that their seafood was sustainably caught. Um, there, is a, there is a large uh, black market f uh, where illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing is concerned. And this industry represents somewhere around $60 billion per year. Recent estimates uh, uh, indicate this figure. And what this pledge will, will help to do as more people sign on to it, it will bring full transparency to the tuna fishing industry and uh, will help to eradicate uh, IUU fishing. So it will be a big win for sustainability and for um, good stewardship of our, of our world's marine resources. The launch of this initiative coincides with Belize's mission to implement an electronic monitoring program that its distant water industrial fishing fleet by 2026. This program is intended to enhance Belize's monitoring, control and surveillance framework and improve the effectiveness of its human observation program. Robinson explained. IUU is illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and that really covers the full gamut of illegal activities because um, there are some activities that are not necessary that are not necessarily regulated, uh, and this also falls under the scope of IUU fishing. So, um, if something is regulated and fishermen would intentionally contravene that regulation, that is illegal fishing. If you catch something and you don't report it, that would constitute unreported fishing. And if there is no regulation uh, concerning a particular fishery and they engage in it, then that would constitute unregulated fishing. So two years ago, the Belize High Seas Fishers Unit um, undertook a, 
an exercise to determine uh, how it could uh, enhance its monitoring, control, and surveillance framework. And we already have in place a vessel monitoring system that tracks the vessels uh, wherever they are in the world uh, via satellite-based means. Um, we have a human observer program which covers a large percentage of the fleet and we have a discharge inspection program uh, which allows us to know what the vessels are discharged after um, their fishing expedition. And together with that, they also submit catch reports, which um, is basically the, the fisherman's logbook to, to um, declare uh, his catches. Now, we found that uh, by through the introduction of electronic monitoring, it would really close a loophole that exists within our MCS framework. And um, we will have uh, almost real-time monitoring of our vessels while they're engaged in fishing operations. And we will be able to take immediate action for any um, non-compliance uh, events that, that we detect through the electronic monitoring means. When we return, Belize Federation of Fishers Advisor concerned over lobster population. Unwrap the joy of crystal clear picture and sound from Iowa, the brand that offers you affordability and exceptional quality. Iowa has a wide range of exceptional products to choose from, such as TVs, speakers, headphones, home appliances, and much more at affordable prices that won't break the bank. Enhance your audio-visual entertainment experience with Iowa. And for your convenience, parts are readily available in country for hassle-free maintenance. You can find Iowa products at your local electronics store countrywide. Choose Iowa, the best in home entertainment and household appliances. Disgracefully exposed as having abused his ministerial powers for personal pleasure, Andre Pires is brought back into Bresenio's cabinet as if nothing ever happened, confirming that the promised review of his actions by the Attorney General was only a charade to ease public pressure at the time. The municipal elections now behind them, it is back to business as usual for Bresenio and the PUP. They are not serious about good governance. I don't care what anybody says. If the government will not change, then the people will have to change the government. Hey Belize, come join us at the Belize Earth Day, a creatively green pop-up happening at the Memorial Park on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Shop from a wide selection of eco-friendly boots, light, soul handmade clay jewelry, Hello Body Belize, Naturally Belize Cosmetics, Belize Eco Bag, Zero Belize, and so much more. Enjoy delectable food and beverages from Don Ceviche, Iguana Stop, Brain Freeze Margaritas, just to name a few. Live performances by QB and Band, Britney Star, and Yes Talia. For more details, call us at 227-2420. The Belize Earth Day pop-up is brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the Belize City Council. Sponsors include DigiWallet, Coca-Cola, and the Belize Waste Control Limited. See you on April 20th at the Memorial Park. Global rise in temperatures due to climate change increase the severity of dry weather conditions experienced in Belize. Forest fires, dust buildup, and contamination of our power lines can result in power interruptions. At BEL, we continue to do our part to minimize the impacts of challenging weather conditions and improve the reliability of our power line system. You can help. Report forest fires or damaged power line structures using our BEL 24-7 app or call us at 0800-BEL-CARE. That is 0800-235 2273. We continue to serve you. Upcoming enhancements to My Social Security. The new healthcare provider feature seamlessly connects healthcare providers, insured persons, and employers to facilitate the payment of sickness benefits. Here are the enhancements. Registered healthcare providers will create and submit online medical certificates using their healthcare provider accounts. 
Insured persons will receive a link to view the medical certificate to complete and submit their sickness benefit claim. And employers will receive an email notification of their employee's sickness claim. Also, the insured person and their employer will receive a copy of the claim decision letter after review. Healthcare providers, insured persons and employers are encouraged to create a portal account to access and benefit from these new services on My Social Security at ssbportal.org.bz. My Social Security Online Portal. Social Security at your fingertips. For 19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, Smart has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making Smart a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the Smart family where we empower you and our country, today, tomorrow, and beyond. Smart! Bringing people together! Belize's fisheries stocks, particularly the lobster population, could be in a critical state within a few years, says an advisor with the Belize Federation of Fishers. Today, the Federation took part in a workshop held by the Earth Journalism Network, which looked at marine stocks and problems that the marine industry faces because of overfishing, illegal fishing, and related practices. George Mavit is a voluntary advisor with the Federation. He paints a grim picture of how Belize's lobster industry could decline if we do not put measures in place to give the lobster population to reproduce. In Belize, depending on who and when you speak to them, there are over 4,000 commercial fishers. One of the issues with this is that Belize has what is referred to as an open access fishery. An open access fishery means there is no limit to the amount of fishers in the industry. One of the recent policy changes that has happened, for example, has been allowing permanent residents to fish. One of the issues with fishing and fisheries is that it's one of the last hunter-gatherer vocations on the planet, all right? And so the issue of how much one can take without damaging the stocks is of paramount importance. Much of the discussion this week has been, for example, on stock assessment. What is the arithmetic of the amount of fish? And when I say fish, I'm using it generically. Lobster, cones, snapper, grouper, etc. in the sea. And what we have found is that of 20 species that have been assessed by the fishers from the Summit Foundation, 17 to 18 of them, 17 to 18 of these species are in unsustainable territory. It means that if we continue to fish them the way that they have been fished, these fisheries will decline and they will collapse. Lobster is in a very, very critical stage, for example. Uh, the data is telling us that if we continue to fish the way that we have been fishing, lobster could crash. And when we say crash, there's no comeback. Lobster could crash in as much as, in as little as three years. Sam Shramsky is a special projects editor with Earth Journalism Network, which engages journalists around the world to engage in environmental and climate journalism. The organization held a workshop for journalists this week to discuss data journalism as it pertains to fisheries data and related topics. 
He appeared on Open Your Eyes on Thursday and explained what it is they engage journalists on. In order to do good environmental and climate journalism, you have to humanize your stories. Mm -hmm. um, even in a data story that seems, well, very unhuman, right, because it's numbers and charts and whatnot, um, always ground your data stories and any environmental story you do in the human context. And that's how you hit home to your viewers, your listeners, your readers, your audience, um, that the issues are you know, important to them. Um, these are existential issues, uh, climate, uh, biodiversity, uh, fisheries issues. I always mm -hmm. say that you know, even if you live in Belize City and you have, you're a professional and you, you know, don't even go to the sea, you know, you're connected to your fisheries, right, in terms of whether you eat them, mm -hmm. uh, whether you have a relative who's involved in the fisheries sector, the economy of Belize as a whole is deeply connected to, to fisheries in many ways. So these are issues that, at, at, at their base, um, are basically connective of, all, of humanity, right? So I, I think that's the way that we really try to engage these environmental themes, these climate themes, is by focusing on um, the human angle and, and the human sensibility. Climate Tracker is offering journalists from across the Caribbean region, including Belize, an opportunity to be a part of a journalism fellowship. The fellowship revolves around climate justice and aims to empower and assist committed climate journalists across the Caribbean in effectively covering climate justice issues. Successful applicants will receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring, a stipend for each story produced, and international exposure. We spoke to the Regional Coordinator for Climate Tracker, Dizani Billy. What we do at Climate Tracker is create opportunities for training, for publishing, for young climate journalists who need that opportunity. Because what we've noticed is that although the Global South is you know, largely affected by climate impacts, young journalists in the regions of these countries don't or the countries of these regions don't have the opportunities to publish uh, because of different constraints. So what we try to do is create that space for young climate journalists or aspiring climate journalists to get training in what climate change means for their region and also pairing them with media houses and NGOs that will enable them to publish the stories that need to be told. According to Billy, the Caribbean region needs more reporters who focus on climate change. She says that the fellowships also aim to do just that. It's a fellowship that started two years ago and it was the brainchild of Climate Tracker and Open Society Foundations, our amazing partner. And what it does is we is create an opportunity for young reporters in the Caribbean to tell climate justice stories. So climate justice, when you think of climate justice, you're thinking of representing marginalized groups, groups that often go unreported, groups that don't often get their voices told um, or their stories told. And so what we've done is create this opportunity where journalists in the Caribbean can go through a couple months of learning about different aspects of climate justice, whether it refers to what climate justice is on a whole, then also how the legal framework of climate justice for the region, how it, re how it reflects in gender justice, um, how it reflects in, cl in, in climate financing, how it reflects in energy justice, and all these different ways that climate justice is so pervasive across society. So, so that they can understand the pervasiveness of climate justice, how it impacts different areas of the region, and therefore be able to go in and tell the stories that need to be told. That's what the fellowship is all about. The deadline to apply is April 22nd. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available at channel5belize.com on both our Facebook and YouTube. I'm Anlin Apolonia from all of us here at News 5. Have a happy and safe weekend. Good night.